Hundo sub. As many of you know in the beer drinking community, 1300 subscribers is a special number. It's like up until then, Up until then, you were like a pupa. You were a, uh, in a chrysalis. And then that chrysalis opens, and this butterfly of awesomeness comes out. Ah. <clears throat> and, uh... I thought that I might record my own thoughts of my my ascension uh, right as I cross over into the 1300 sub uh, uh, realm and lose all kind of connection to uh, uh, what it was like just kind of be normal and not just amazingly excellent all the time. I think that to just kind of give you an idea of is how I'm feeling right now is probably how Chuck Norris has felt his entire life. For a little on the uh, the thirteen hundo, let's uh, let's go to Jack. Uh, Jack, your thoughts uh, on the thirteen hundo? I don't know what the obsession is there with the thirteen hundred, but like I said, he obsesses over shit. Thirteen hundred subs in the vast ocean of YouTube. Thirteen hundred subs. What the fucking do? That, that, that's like trying to hear a fart in a hurricane. Yeah, it is like a hurricane, and I think that uh, as I start to become more and more awesome, I start noticing things, uh, you know, about how great I am, um, and how it affects uh, the world around me, uh, to greater degrees, and at first I didn't quite notice. For instance, uh, uh, People started noticing that uh, compasses stopped pointing at north, and they started pointing at me. At first, I was just kind of weird, you know. You're like, "What's that all about?" You know, I wasn't, I wasn't the 1300 yet. I didn't know. And then, uh, then I started noticing like they started coming out with compasses that pointed to. Uh, South, East, West, North, and Earl. That's how they make them now. When I started, like, when I started noticing, uh, I started affecting the weather, um, and they started naming the weather after me. I was like, there's something up with that. Something up with that. Eye of Hurricane Earl from inside the eye at 40,000 feet. And Just recently, um, they removed uh, the word awesome from the dictionary. Yeah, they uh, they removed the word awesome, and uh, now awesome actually is its own book. It's like its own dictionary, and uh, it's all about me. Old book. <clears throat> Definition of awesome. It's pretty cool. Uh, when my awesomeness got to the point uh, of having an event horizon, when I realized that, you know, Einstein's theories actually applied uh, to me, um, that's when, I mean, that's when I really start feeling the changes take place. Uh, not just uh, with me, but in, in physics itself. If you could create a large enough distortion in space-time, by placing enough mass in a small enough space, you could create a region of space-time so strongly curved that nothing, not even light, could escape it. 
And since nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, anything that entered this region of space-time would be trapped there until quantum mechanical effects allowed it to escape. The, the power of the 1300 uh, uh, quickly changes uh, all, all things, all dynamics. As a matter of fact, uh, um, right as I hit uh, the 1300, um, Frodo was on his way to, uh, to Mordor uh, to cast the, fi uh, hit the ring of power into the fires. And then I hit my 1300, and he just came and brought it to me. It also turns out that uh, I'm now one of the few awesome things that you can see from space. I don't know if you know this, uh, but uh, um, you know the entertainment industry is also kind of latching on to my uh, uh, my uh, metamorphosis uh, into, uh, into into hugeness. Uh, which allows me to do uh, things that uh, uh, that human beings can't do. Uh, for instance, uh, fight Godzilla. That was, that was it. Was really good. Uh, to work with Godzilla, um, and uh, it, it was all sorted out that, uh, um, I guess there's this thing about Godzilla is not allowed to lose, um, so like he just kind of called it a draw, um, and people got kind of upset, because uh, at one point in time Godzilla uh, kisses my ring, and uh, uh, I take over as, uh, um, I, I, bec I become lord of the, uh, the island of Monster, uh, uh, the Monster Island, essentially. Which pretty, which turned out the other monsters pretty much just did whatever they wanted to. I guess that's how Monster Island rolled before that. Um, but I, right off the bat, I started having them use uh, the toilet, um, which essentially is just a big thing of flowing lava that cuts through the center of the island. I'm like, that's where you go from now on, uh, monsters. And then, you know, that's where monsters went. Because uh, Earl's word is law. And once Godzilla kisses your ring, <clears throat> other monsters are compelled to, to obey that law. Oh, uh, I got to, uh, got to meet the Patriots, which was really cool. You know, like, the people are like, uh, early should meet the Patriots, if you know. At this point in time uh, in your career, the more, uh, the more people you meet, the better. And uh, so I met the Patriots, and they were really, they were cool guys. So I, I played them and uh, and I won. It was a good game. Um, I, I had to, sometimes I had to stop things and ask uh, you know the rules and stuff like that. But I picked up on it really fast and it wasn't uh, wasn't as hard as uh, I thought it was going to be. And um, I really liked tackling uh, and uh, and knocking people down. It was a lot of fun and uh, just running right through them uh, with the with with the ball. Um, that was that was great. I don't think they let me win either, uh, because uh, some of them got uh, lost their cool a little bit, and I had to I had to give them one of those, my Monster Island finger. So I had an opportunity uh, uh, to go into space, which is really cool. Not a lot of people get to do that. And, and now that I've, uh, that, that whole 1300 uh, moxie that I have now, I, I didn't need a spaceship, actually, to go. Mm. And while I was up there, I assimilated the Borg. 
are born. You will be assimilated. I think I'm starting to have, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm able to change uh, uh, physics, as we talked about earlier now, and it's, good, it's a good way, uh, which has got a lot of people talking. Uh, and evidently, uh, Eskimos now have uh, 400 unique words uh, for Earl. I'm the only gay Eskimo. I'm the only one I know. I'm the only gay Eskimo in my tribe. Uh, one thing that uh, I think hasn't been fully understood and might not ever be is... Uh, how my awesomeness actually has gone back in time. I'm starting to become like retroactively awesome. Um, which actually, I don't know if that's ever happened to anybody that's, uh, that's hit the 1300 uh, uh, threshold. So uh, I, just, I just might be awesome, more awesome than they are. Mm. For instance, uh, in 1629, uh, Spain tried to claim me. The Thirty Years' War was a conflict that put most of Europe in ruins. It lasted from 1618 to 1648, and it mostly involved Germany, but the Holy Roman Empire and many more countries in Europe were involved as well. So, uh, and last but not least, uh, 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 Earl has changed uh, the face of, uh, of all competition. Uh, there's now... Uh, uh, third place, second place, and Earl, uh, which is, is it's cool and it's, you know, it's probably how things should be. So, uh, yeah, so I accept that. I accept it. And uh, I think that, you know, probably, uh, you know, my ascension is going to, uh, you know, change a lot of things, to change sports, uh, you know, the nature of space, which you know that's all that those are pretty big things and uh, pretty major changes uh time it uh have, i'm affecting time uh and probably you know we know the past for instance that uh you know for instance you know spain trying to claim me at a ridiculous uh early point in history, and uh, it was really early in the morning as well. Part of my awesomeness uh, requires sleeping in. That might be my only weakness. I hope if any uh, other countries try to claim me uh, that they uh, they do it like you know, at least after 2 uh, p.m. But then, you know, it's not all, it's not all great giant things. You know, I can fly, I can fly into space without a spaceship. Um, sometimes it's just as simple as, uh, when I go to SeaWorld, um, I splash Shamu. It's just, uh, it kind of, nature has a hierarchy. It's very respectful. I know, uh, they, they teach Shamu a lot of tricks, uh, but he still obeys the law of the jungle. So... They're like, Splash Earl, Shamu, and Shamu like just kind of like, and I will, and I give him a big tidal wave uh, with the back of my sinewy hand, and uh, Shamu takes it. He's a good whale. Uh, all right, well, I'm not going to finish these 40s. Actually, uh, part of uh, my powers now are uh, my 40s don't go empty. These are eternal. That's why uh, I chose uh, Mickey's and Colt 45 uh, for my forever beers. Um, and uh, after you reach the the 13 hundo, um, you know, you could have something like this. I mean, you can't drink out of these. You're never going to have that kind of power. Uh, but uh, you can always watch me. You can always come to my channel and watch me drink out of these forever beers. All right, everybody. So, uh, uh, thanks for visiting uh, Earl Tube, and uh, don't worry. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to change your reality too much. Um, I think it's we're just kind of changing to fit uh, me, a more perfect reality. Uh, so that can that can only benefit you. All right, everybody. 
let's peace out with a little bit of, a little bit more Eskimo action, okay? And uh, then I'll see you uh, from space. I'm the only gay Eskimo. I'm the only one I know. I'm the only gay Eskimo in my tribe.